Oh, wow. In the heart of Syria's darkness, a democratic, egalitarian, and feminist society emerges. Four million people, thousands of communes, a non-hierarchical social structure, and a cooperative economy. Why is no one talking about Rojava? Well, if you're watching the my YouTube channel, Action Batsa, or even on uh, my BitChute channel, Frico Plays, you will know that uh, I do talk about Rojava. It's one of my favorite places, and I am... I'm just going to let you know I'm extremely biased. I am extremely pro-Rojava. Rojavans follow some form of social justice more. But the Rojavans' versions of social justice look very different than what has come out in America. America has produced basically kind of a fascistic version of social justice. And as I see it subjectively by my interpretation. And... I'm very vehemently opposed to the version in America, but uh, I don't really necessarily even agree with their version of social justice, but I am, I'm not at all opposed to communities uh, living out what, they, what they're doing and how they do it. Because there's one fundamental difference between the Rajavans and the Americans, and that is the Rajavans have the starting assumption of everything that they do a sense of even ideological consensual exchange. They're looking on the main to lift every human being up around them. They're looking to redeem, restore, give grace. They operate very differently than how American SJW does because of American SJW's fundamental starting point we are the morality police, and we have a right to uh, take uh, violent action against uh, people in a uh, premeditated uh, uh, way. We can pre preemptively strike you anytime we want. The Rajavans, they don't really have that at the heart of, of who and what they are. And I'm not... Uh, l let's see if they've got anything in here. Here are the battlefields and chemical attacks. Okay. Uh, just to give you a sense of who these Rajavans are, the men and the women have fought side by side for years now, since 2014. And uh, the men and the women together are a lot of the, uh, well, you ever see those 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 uh, YPG folks? I, now I'm I'm not sure if the YPG is Rajavan or not. I have to double check that. I believe that they are connected. Uh, but uh, you see a lot of these. Uh, a lot. I'll just say a lot of the women that you've seen in Syria, the women fighters. A lot of those are Rajavans. They have policing. Uh, well, their policing is very different than ours. They're not looking. To, uh, to, to, to try to catch pre-crime. They're literally there for security purposes to actually be there for security, to protect and serve. Uh, I mean, on, on the main. I don't live there, so I don't know how much is transi transition to what, but the ideal is, is this is what their policing is supposed to represent. They're policing. They only, you only serve for a certain term. Everybody, almost everybody at some point may very well have to take a term policing. And when they police, they have men and women that go out together. It's a man and a woman team that go out together. So they, their leadership is such as it is, is always a man and a woman together. So they're not looking to just destroy men and take them out of leadership. They're looking for men and women to lead together. That's very, very significantly different. And now I tell you all this because we're going to get to this story. All right, and I want to let you know how how biased I am regarding Rajavid. So I don't know the facts. I can't know the facts. So I can't really tell you what's fact or fiction. But I will tell you that based upon my understanding of the Rajavans, I would seriously doubt the veracity of this UN claim and my understanding of what the UN is and the nature of, of the... Fun they're, they're, they're very coercive... Uh, in their fundament, they're very uh, moral supremacist, uh, coercive in how they view the world. Rojavans, by the way, are not moral supremacists. They're they're moral confidentialist, I guess you could say. They're confident in their morality, but they're not supreme in it. Uh, but the UN is certainly uh, morally supreme in its morality, as opposed to just 
like I, I would see even of myself I hope so but I my I'm a Christian I have a Christian morality and I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm confidential in it as in not as in confident in it I, I want to say confidential and use it in that way if it's not used in that way it should be dictionaries do your upgrades so at least the ones well never mind so Rajabins deny weaponizing electricity after UN statement notes allegations and this is from Rudal dot net in the Kurdistan region and let's uh let's uh, give you a sense of where we're at here where is our map so there is what they're calling Rojava I'll just back up I mean they're called they're saying that this is the size of Rojava Rojava's uh bigger than this though but uh okay they're just gonna call that Rojava so as you're you're zeroing in out here you can get a sense that it's basically in the northern Syria area and their fundamental threat to their existence is Turkey. Now, what they have working in their favor is that uh, the Turks are the only ones that really want to have the Turks have a strong presence in Syria. The Russians are absolutely interested in keeping the Turks out of Syria. It was useful for the Russians to try to cozy up to the Turks to, uh, to allow the Russians a space to get in in the first place. Uh, but once they were in and fully established, now they're playing this uh, kind of a double game with the Turks. It's uh, Well, they're playing a lot of double games, but everybody else is. That's where they've got allies that are fundamentally, like, oppositionally opposed to their interest in other parts of the world. It's And then in other parts of the world, they're, like, naturally allied. So, it's my, by the way, I, I just want to throw out there, uh, I, I believe that uh, one of the natu most natural allies for Russia is actually the United States, and the United States is a natural ally for Russia as well, as far as uh, geopolitically how they could help uh, reshift the balance of the world to, uh, well, in my theory, have, a, have, a, have at least a 30-year peace. That, that could happen as a repo as a result of a Russian especially if you have Russia the United States India and Japan in fundament and, and and Great Britain I'll throw in them if you have those nation states fundamental in fundamental alliance with one another uh, and and those the, the, the only the, the the biggest friction there would be Russia and Japan they're gonna have to set aside some differences I think that's possible I think it's uh possible for that to happen i don't think their differences are nearly as uh, frictioning as russia and china and japan and china so i think china china basically has made it clear to everyone that there's a there's a there's a big interest in if it, all the nation states that want to continue more or less the uh the peaceful competition and not get into uh, actual major wars with major nation states. They want to just continue to fight the tiny proxy wars and tiny poor nations, uh, which is, by the way, I don't support the continuation of that system. Saying that uh, they're 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 finding a reason to 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 find themselves to one another. And I think Russia and the United States that they are two of those nations. If the United States and Russia were in an alliance, the United States would have the power. To withdraw from Europe and to leave Europe to its own devices because Europe has been from the perspective of anyone who actually values a an American nation-state type identity in these lands Europe has been a horrible horrible constant influencer in the negative as far as that's concerned uh, so the I the, the ability for the United States to deal with Europe in a more adversarial manner would be quite lovely for, uh, for, for America. And it would also help America selectively embolden nation states within that support their type of uh, construct. So a nation state like Poland, nation states like uh, Austria, the more what you would call right wing, that uh, these would be the nation states that, that, that this America would, if, if this is a Donald Trump world going into the future. And a lot of these nation states, I think that they're kind of betting on it being. And uh, even if it's not, I think that they're not in the mood for if a Democrat comes along, they're not in the mood. This is another powerful uh, move here that, that maybe others aren't thinking about. This is a move that affects the p potential Democrat president coming in. You want to use the uh, Middle East in your neo-Khanish kind of way. Uh, 
you're going to have a bigger problem because now Israel might even feel emboldened to not feel the need to support you if it's got all these other nation states that are now supporting it. And they're going to continue to have an interest in supporting Israel because Israel and uh, with, with the gas pipeline coming through Israel and going up the, uh, 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 across the Mediterranean to Greece, uh, there is some significant... Uh, significant uh monies to be made and monies in the gazillions that will fundamentally transform the fate of many of the nation states tied to it and it all depends on peace they can't be having terrorists trying to blow up gas pipelines they need they need people to settle their crap because they want to make some money now and they want to be able to neutralize uh, a, a United States that wants to continue to use the Middle East as a as a as a playground for its uh, latest military tech, which is essentially how how we've used the Middle East over the past thirty years. Because uh, I mean, this is this is Donald Trump making a move that if he's president in the next uh, in the times to come, he he's he it's it's going to put him in a tremendous position to to pivot towards Russia. And to pivot away from from France and from Germany, leave them to their own devices, weaken the EU, and embolden the other. Because you, you, it's not America's best interest for the EU to continue to exist, because the EU is is going down a very authoritarian police state path, and it's it's uh, Britain is still going down the path, Australia is going down that path, Canada is going down that path. So the United States has to do everything it can do. I mean, Donald Trump's United States uh, has to do everything it can do to try to uh, to 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 be able. This is one of the reasons why Russia Russia is fundamentally opposed to this. Uh, I mean, really, the divisions are happening. What's going the, the what the Arab world has experienced is a version of what we're experiencing right now. They have their is Islamo-fascism is a version of, uh, of uh, well, I mean, it's just the fascistic part. It's the fascistic part. Like uh, uh, like I explained in the beginning with this this, this group, these Rajavids, they're, uh, they're, being, they're being accused of uh, uh, cutting off uh, electricity to the Aluk station, and they're saying, nope, we've kept it up. As a matter of fact, you know, other places we've had problems, but only because the uh, Turks have cut off power. The Turks, by the way, are, are they have been trying to uh, invade Rojava for a while, and they're kind of bogged down. And in no ho in no thanks, thanks to Russia, that is not allowing them to use their air power anymore. So they're kind of grounded, and the Russians are not really interested in the Turks doing very well. Uh, Turkey is a whole other mess altogether I could go to, but I won't right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at this. Because I'm sure I'm going to talk about Rajava in other episodes to come because there is uh, so much more to talk about. Like right here, you got Abdullah Al Salan. We'll talk a little bit about him in the future. And uh, and if we're going to talk about him, we're going to talk about, well, we got stuff. Just keep watching this channel because these are the types of stories I think primarily that I'm going to be covering every day for right now.